Hello everyone, it's Katya with Lunar Sun Creations. Um, today we will be beginning a tutorial. Yay! I finally found some time. I've had a lot of requests to do a tutorial for the Asian inspired Serenity Folio. Um, I'll put a link in the description box below uh, with the walkthrough of this folio in case anyone wants to check it out uh, once again or for the first time um, before we start doing the tutorial on it. So I'm guessing it's going to be probably at least a four part tutorial. I'd like to keep each part to under an hour, so I'm guessing it'll probably be at least four parts. We'll go through everything, the making of the, the well there's not really pages, but we'll go through the construction of everything including the, uh, the covers and spine and etc etc. Um, I do not have this paper collection anymore, this was the Serenity Collection, um, so I will be redoing this album the exact same way, but using the DCWV uh, Mariposa collection. So you can use any 12x12 12 12 paper collection that you like, the techniques work the same with any paper collection. So you choose your paper collection and we'll get started. Hello everyone and welcome to the first part of the uh, Asian Inspired Folio Album Tutorial. So to start, uh, we'll need uh, a couple pieces of chipboard measuring 8.5 by 10, so you need two of those. And then uh, one piece that measures 8.5 by 1, and that's going to be your spine. So it's going to sit like that, and that is going to be your cover. So 8.5 by 10 times 2, 8.5 by 1. So I'll let you cut those, and then you are going to cover the back with score tape. This might be a little bit excessive with how much score tape I used. Um, alternatively, you could use wet glue as well to um, adhere your chipboard to your the, the cardstock that's going to wrap around it so it's totally your choice I, I tend to use the score tape so um, either one of those put uh, score tape on the backs of all three pieces of your chipboard and then you're going to need two pieces of black cardstock to 12 by 12 pieces and you're going to cut each of those pieces down to 10 and a half because you want one inch on the top and one inch on the bottom and so because one piece of paper obviously isn't enough to cover the whole thing you're going to take a second piece cut it as well down to 10 and a half and then we'll have to adhere them together so I've taken a half inch strip of score tape here and we're just going to peel that off. Oh, got a little bit stuck here, there we go. So you're just going to adhere these two together. And then you will have just enough room to cover your chipboard pieces. Okay, so first we're going to adhere, adhere these down to your two pieces that you've just adhered together. So we'll take all the score tape off. Okay, so I've taken all of my score tape off. I didn't want to have to make you sit through that. <laughs> So we're going to place it, leaving a one inch, I'm just going to eyeball it here, so leaving a one inch gap all the way around 
to wrap your chipboard. Just push it down really firmly. And then you're going to take your one inch spine piece and you're going to put it with about a one eighth of an inch. I often take my ruler and just kind of use my ruler as a bit of a guide and just so it has a bit of space there and line it up. So you just want a little bit of space so that it folds nicely. And then you're going to take your other piece that is 10 by 8 and a half and do the same thing. Just leave a little bit of space and push that down firmly. Okay. So now you're going to take your score tape, or again if you'd prefer wet glue that's fine too, and you're going to put score tape all the way along the edge. Try and get as close to the edge as you can. and along the bottom and the sides Okay, so that's a half inch, and then I'm going to take my quarter inch and do the same thing. So you've got tape covering the whole whole inch all the way around. Okay. And you're going to take your bone folder and just kind of burnish that, get it all down really well, get any kind of bubbles out that you might have. Okay, so it should look something like that. And now you are going to cut at a diagonal on each one of the corners. So you want to miter the corners. So I usually leave just a tiny bit left on the edge. So you're going to do that to all four corners. And that way you know you've got adhesive and score tape uh, right up to the very edge. Get rid of those. Okay, and now it's time to wrap it around. So remove your score tape. I tend to do the two longer sides first. So what I like to do is, is gently start to fold the book, the cover up just so it gets a little bit of a bend in it, kind of train it up and then kind of slowly pull it down so it gets a good nice crease and I find it helps if you start in the middle and then kind of smooth it out to the sides. And burnish it down so you've got a good hold there. And 
and then flip it around and we'll do the other side. So remove your score tape. And again, fold it. Push it down in the center and then work your way to either edge burnish it down and now you're ready to do the two sides so remove your score tape And now these little corners, I don't know if you can see these two little corners here, you're going to want to push those in so that you don't get a, a pointed edge. Um, you can do it just with your finger if you like, or I tend to use the edge of my scissors and just kind of push it over like that. And then again, we're going to train it a little bit. I left a little bit too much of a corner on that one, I feel. And then the other side, push this in. Remove your score tape. And then start to train it into the bend. Then you're going to take, um, I usually take my ruler and kind of put it in the crease and then slowly fold this up and then again on the other side. All right, so there we go, we've got our cover. All right, now we just want to put a uh, piece of uh, cardstock just to cover up this. The pattern paper will be covering the other two sides. So we will want to get it as close to the edge as we can. Okay, so now you'll want to cover this little bit here. The pattern paper will be covering these two sides. So you'll need to cut a piece of cardstock at 8 and 3 eighths, so it's right to the edges, by 6 across. Okay, so 8 and 3 eighths by 6, and then you will use your score tape or your wet adhesive, whatever you would prefer, and put some on there. Okay, and you want to burnish Burnish that down, get out any bubbles. Okay, now this is one of the places that I like to put some um, duct tape. It just helps, because this is going to be one of the things that will be bending all the time. So this just, uh, instead of something like Tyvek, this uh, just reinforces this. So, I'm going to take, I'm going to put a couple pieces down, so fairly close to the edge, 
And it doesn't have to be perfect because you will be covering this up with the pattern paper. I mean with the cardstock. And then and then one more piece beside it. So that just helps to reinforce that uh, those creases. So now we can put on our piece of cardstock that we just cut. Okay, so we'll lay that down. As centered as you can. And then again, use your ruler to help with those creases. Okay, so that is your cover. I felt I should apologize to you because I made a big boo-boo and the next big chunk of the tutorial is unfortunately not in wide view. I had my camera turned the wrong way so it's going to be a narrower view for the next little bit. So, uh, first tutorial fail, sorry. Um, I've already done this tutorial a couple times and I don't have time to do it again. I felt like if I didn't just put this on YouTube, then it was gonna have to wait another couple weeks and I didn't want that. So when we do all the pattern paper, etc., it will be fine and it'll be in the right view, but for the next little while, you're gonna have to deal with a narrow view. So I hope that's okay and please forgive me. Sorry. Now we have got our covers done and now we want to add our ribbon for the closure so um, I'm using a sheer ribbon just because that's what I prefer but you can use any kind of ribbon you you like and we're just going to kind of eyeball it and however much you feel you'll need to tie it up and so we'll cut a couple pieces the same length So what did I cut mine? I cut mine at about, about 18 inches or so. Okay. So I use score tape. Again, you can use whatever adhesive you like. And I just kind of put my score tape right onto my ribbon. Um, by about around six inches or so. You want it to sit at least part way um, across your uh, cart, your chipboard. So we'll remove the backing. And now you want to make sure that you leave um, some ribbon without adhesive near the edge just so you don't see the adhesive at all. And there we go. And then do the other side.
try and line it up as much as you can. You can put a ruler there so you kind of know where the other side is. All right, so that's your closer. Now you can uh, set this aside for now. And we will start working on this first part here. So we're going to be working on this whole section here. Uh, this is the, uh, um, the quarter flips. So they go like that. And it goes up and across, all held with magnets. And then it opens to the sides and opens in the center. So this whole section, um, I actually, I did not create this section. This is a tutorial that I followed from Anna of Anna's Paper Creations. And on YouTube, uh, she's Zanero1. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'll link her part of the tutorial, this part, um, in the description box below. I did contact her and uh, made sure that it was okay that I included this um, this section in, in uh, this tutorial here and she said that as long as the tutorial was free that she was a-okay with it so thank you very much Anna and um, I modified it just slightly from the way that uh, she did it simply because I wanted hers are perfectly square and because um, mine is a little bit more rectangular and she adhered hers right down to the page, whereas ours is a flip. So, what we are going to start with is a piece of cardstock that is 9 inches by 9 and 5 eighths. And then we're going to get our scoreboard. And we are going to score it. We're going to score it on the 9 inch sides, the shorter side, at a half. And 3 quarters of an inch, because we want to create a gusset. Because uh, this is going over quite a bit of bulk, so you want to make sure that there's enough leeway so it can close over top of all that bulk. So your, your gusset, the quarter inch gusset, is going to be right here. Okay? So now we're going to fold on those score lines. And now for anyone who is new to mini albums and, and scoring and all that jazz, um, when you score something it creates an indent, which is what we call a valley. And then on the back side it creates a, a bump, which is a mountain. So uh, to strengthen, to keep the strength of the paper so that it doesn't crack, you always want to turn the valley into a mountain. So on the indented side, you want that's the side that you want to fold, and if and the vice versa. So you're turning your valley into a mountain, and mountains into valleys. So that way it keeps the strength of the paper. All right. So we've created our little gusset there. All right. And now this is another area because it's going to be getting. It has a lot of weight and it's going to be getting flipped a lot. This is another area where I like to add um, either duct tape or electrical tape. Either one of them works. So just something, or, or Tyvek if it's something that you can cover up. Um, so you're not really going to see, I'm going to add duct tape just to add strength. Again, this is an optional, an optional thing. Now I want to start with a really straight piece though. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't let your duct tape get away from you. You don't want that. Okay, so. Just going to line it up here as best you can. Go all the way across. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so that's going to be on the back side. And just refold those score lines. So all of that's going to be covered up. So you won't even you won't even see it. And now we are going to do the next pieces, the flaps here, these parts that open up like that. Okay, so you'll need two pieces of cardstock that measure eight and one eighth by ten. You need two of those, and then you're going to score them. You're going to score them at a half an inch and then you're going to flip it over and measure our score at five and a quarter okay so that's where the valleys and mountains come in we flipped it over because this side is folding in and then your half inch is folding behind okay so we've turned both of those valleys into mountains so you need two of those I've already prepared my other one. You're going to put score tape on that half inch, making sure you don't go over your score lines, just up to them. Okay, and then you're going to slightly miter your corners here and burnish your tape. Okay. So now you've got two pieces, the half inch on the back there, and then they both open up like that. And now we're going to adhere them down. So get your 9 by 9 5 eighths piece and take off your score tape. And I was just going to turn it this way because it's easier for me to line up. So line it up right with the edge as close as you can okay and then you're going to do the other side if i can get the score tape off okay and so you're going to line it up so you've got the fold here score tapes against this the very edge here Okay, so you've got that. All right, so that looks great. Now we're going to add the four pieces that flip and flap. Okay, so the next step is to cut two pieces of cardstock at four by five and one eighths, and you're going to score at a half an inch on the five and one eighth side. Okay, so you need two of those four by five and a eighth scoring at a half an inch on the five and one eighth side and then you also need two pieces four and a half by four and five eighths and you're going to score half an inch on the four and a half inch side okay so four and a half by four and five eighths scoring half an inch on the four and a half inch side Okay, so now you're going to fold on all of your score lines. I've already scored these ones. Burnish all your score lines. And then you're going to add your quarter inch score tape to each one of those half inch folds, making sure not to go over your score line, just up to. Okay, burnish that real quick. Okay, now we're ready to adhere them to this piece where you've got your opening, everything that we just did. Okay, so.
So now the way it's going to work is you're going to have one of the pieces that is uh, four and a half by which one was that? So one of the four and a half by four and five eighths pieces. You're going to have the score tape at the bottom and you're going to line it up right here. Okay, so we'll do that. Line it up as close as you can with the top edge and the sides. Okay, and then you're going to take one of the uh, four by five and an eighth with the flap on the side <clears throat> and you're going to adhere that one right below it with this part going towards the center okay and then on this side you're going to have the uh, the second four and a half by four and five eighths. Take your score tape off, and uh, this one is going to have the flap going towards the middle. And then your last one. And this one is going to have the score tape part going towards the center over here. Okay, so now it goes that way, that way, over, and up. Alright, so now we need to put some magnets in this. So, get your magnets ready. I'm going to use quite a few magnets. So, get a little bit of score tape. Put it on your magnet. Square tape off and kind of fold it over so it's just covering the magnet. And now you're going to put it somewhere in the center. Now you're going to let the, another magnet attach to it. Put another little bit of score tape on top of that. Peel the square tape off if you can. There we go, and then fold it over. Okay, now we're going to attach another magnet to that. Again, with some score tape. And we're going to flip it up. And do that process again. Fold it over. Put 
helps to put the magnet on first. There we go. Okay, so we've got our four magnets on the top pieces, but now we need to put magnets on the insides as well. So open one of the flaps up, let your magnet adhere to its partner, a little bit of score tape, peel it off and down. And we'll do that with all four sides. So. This, this, uh, this whole flat part, uh, this whole section, really uses quite a few magnets, but it's got it. It just has such an awesome effect, so it's very, very cool. And then the last one, Okay, so we've got all four of our flaps magnetized. Now, you're also going to want to put a magnet on each of these side flaps. So, get another magnet, do the same process, take off the score tape. And you want to put it, you know, somewhere in the center of the page going this way, but make sure to leave enough space over here so that your pattern paper will really cover up that magnet. Okay, let it match its partner there. Some score tape. Okay, fold that over. And then we'll do the same to this side. Somewhere around there. Let its partner find it there. <clears throat> Now, if you don't have magnets, you could probably use Velcro, but I just don't like the Velcro to show, so I'm not a big fan. Um, so lastly, you will need magnets on these flaps. Okay. One there. <clears throat> feel like I should sing a song or entertain you somehow while this is happening. It's not very exciting to watch this part, but it does make for... Oops, that's not where I want you. I want you over here. <clears throat> and then two more on the other side. We're nearing the end, folks, I promise. Okay, and one more, somewhere around there. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna close it up, flip it over, and then put magnets, let them kind of find their counterparts on the back side. Okay, perfect. 
And now put a little bit of score tape under each one of those. I'll take the backing off first. Making sure that it's in the right, put the score tape in the right place. And last two. Okay. Now we are fully magnetized. Okay, and now what we're going to do is adhere this whole thing to your uh, cover. So this half inch flap is going to get some score tape or wet adhesive, whatever you prefer. I think I'm going to use wet adhesive just because it gives you a little bit more wiggle room so it dries a little bit slower. Now I, this isn't necessary, but I just like to kind of with my finger go over it just to make sure it's right to the edges. I always have some wet naps handy. Just because I am a messy crafter. Oh, got a little bit on the edge there. Okay. So now we are going to adhere this down. Okay. Open it up and just make sure that's really down there. All right, that's your first part.